In this movie, I'll show you how to duplicate the two lines we've drawn so far in order to create two additional ridges along the top of the factory. And so notice if I just go ahead and drag one of these points or one of these segments, and a segment, by the way, is the line that's drawn between the anchor points. If I go ahead and drag one of those selected points, then I will move these two lines together because after all, they're both selected. That's not where I want to put these though. So I'll go ahead and undo that move by pressing Control Z or Command Z on the Mac. If you want to constrain your movement to some multiple of 45 degrees, then as you're dragging, then go ahead and press and hold the shift key like so. And so notice because I'm dragging more or less to the left, I'm dragging exactly horizontally along this guideline, but I could just as easily drag up and to the left or just straight upward like so, or straight down or what have you. Again, that's not what I want to do. So I'll go ahead and press control Z or command Z on the Mac to undo that move. The other keyboard trick involves, as you might expect, the alt key here in the PC or the option key on the Mac. And what happens when you press and hold the alt key or the option key on the Mac, again, after you begin dragging, notice that your single black arrowhead changes to a double arrowhead. And that indicates that if you go ahead and drop those objects, you will create a duplicate of them. So again, that's a function of pressing alt here on the PC or option on the Mac. What I want to do is both constrain my objects and duplicate them. So I'll go ahead and press control Z or command Z on the Mac to undo that move. And I'll start dragging from this bottom right anchor point right here. And I'll go ahead and drag over to the left as you're seeing me do here. And I'll press and hold the shift key in order to constrain the angle of my drag to horizontal. And I'll also press and hold the alt key or the option key on the Mac so that I can create a duplicate of these shapes. And that's going to give me the double arrowhead as you're seeing right there. So this is very important. If you're following along, start your drag and then press and hold the shift and alt keys here on the PC or the shift and option keys on the Mac. And then go ahead and snap to the intersection of those two guidelines and your front arrowhead cursor there will change from black to white to indicate that you have a snap. And because you'd have a double snap cursor, that double arrowhead, that indicates that you're going to create a duplicate as well. At which point, go ahead and release your mouse button and then release the shift and alt or shift and option keys and you'll end up with two perfectly aligned duplicates as we're seeing right here. Now we want to do that exact same thing again. And of course we could re-perform the operation if we wanted to, but there's another and easier way to work. And that's to go up to the object menu, choose transform and then choose transform again, or better yet, all you need to do is press control D here on the PC or command D on the Mac. And that D stands for duplicate. So in other words, you're going to duplicate your last duplication. And so notice as soon as I choose that command or press that keyboard shortcut, I will create another perfectly aligned copy of my selected lines. All right, now I want to draw a new line. So I'll go ahead and once again, select the line segment tool, which notice has a keyboard shortcut, which looks a lot like the line tool cursor except that it's going the other direction. So in other words, you can press the backslash key in order to get to the line tool. Or of course you can just click on the tool icon. And then I want you to drag from this point right here downward like so. And I want to constrain the angle of my line to exactly vertical. So I'll press and hold the shift key and that'll set the angle value to 270 degrees as you're seeing in the heads of display. And I want the distance to be something that looks like it's getting to the bottom of the artwork. And I figure a distance, which is to say a line length of 300 points works out beautifully. At which point I'll just go ahead and release my mouse button to create that line. All right, now I want to extend this first right hand line downward so that it aligns to the left hand line. And I'll do that using an arrow tool. But rather than grabbing the black arrow tool, which is going to move an entire object. So in other words, if I switch to the black arrow tool and then I clicked on this path to select it, and then I dragged its bottom point, I would just end up moving the entire line. What I want to do is extend the line. And so I'm going to switch to the white arrow tool 
the so-called direct selection tool, which allows you to grab individual anchor points. And we'll see what that looks like in just a moment. But first, notice that it has a keyboard shortcut of A for arrow. So I'll go ahead and select that tool, and then I'll click on this bottom point to select it independently of the top point. So if you look very carefully, you'll see that the bottom point appears as a red square that's filled in, and the top point appears as a hollow square, so it's got a white center. And that tells us that that top anchor point is not selected. All right, now I'll go ahead and drag this bottom point, and that allows me to both stretch and change the angle of the line. And to make sure it stays nice and vertical, I'll press and hold the shift key, and then I'll drag down till I see that horizontal intersect line extending to the thick black line over there on the left-hand side of the document. And then I'll release in order to exactly align that selected anchor point into place. All right, at this point, I decided the factory shouldn't be quite this tall. And so I want to take the entire roof line down. And I'm going to do that, once again, armed with the white arrow tool. And what you want to do, if you're working along with me, is drag in an empty portion of the document in order to create this dotted marquee. And go ahead and drag the marquee around all of those top points so that all of these points are selected like so. So whenever you draw a marquee in Illustrator, you're going to select everything inside that marquee. Then just go ahead and drag one of these top selected points downward while pressing the shift key until you get that snap cursor. That is to say you want to snap to that horizontal guideline, at which point you can go ahead and release in order to create this newly low slung roof. And that's how you duplicate as well as extend straight lines here inside Illustrator.